whole gender business that's going on, that in and of itself could be the end of this country. The gender business <laughs> is breaking my heart. And I have teenage kids. And uh, Oh, the gender business where in the sixth grade boys want to become girls now because they've been brainwashed? You mean that gender business? Right. And I tell my son, I said, you open the door for a girl. You stand up when a woman sits down. You do. Oh, there's a war against stuff. boys in this. There is a war against boys in this country that is so dangerous that anyone with a brain knows what's going on. Little boys are being told they should consider being girls in the sixth grade. They should go and become a girl. It's, it's crazy. A mad country does that to their, to their boys. Who is going to fight the wars of the future? <clears throat> Who is going to fight the wars in this country? Who's going to defend America if you turn boys into that from the time they're little boys? You've got to make boys strong, not mean. There's a difference between strong and mean. Don't you agree with me? Absolutely. This is this is all very. In fact, weak people are meaner than strong people in my in my experience. Absolutely, and this is all intentional. This is coming from the top. This is. Oh totally God, I know. I just get it. I get it. I get it. I take it you weren't watching the Super Bowl yesterday. No, I wasn't. But I have to tell you one thing. Um, I didn't watch it, but I was listening, and I heard a little clip of the Star Spangled Banner. And you know, given I'm not talking about stylist style style, but I heard the words. I was listening to the words, and I started to choke up, which I might do now, because we are in a war. We're not fighting the British anymore, but we're fighting ourselves. And this guy has so atomized this country. He has, so, he has turned us. We are eating each other. And if we don't stop it, and if we don't start swinging as a single nation under the leadership like someone like Trump, who gets it, who understands it, I don't know where we're going to go. And I'm, I'm, I'm traumatized at the thought that he's not going to win. It keeps me up at night. So when you think there are lots of us who are up at night, there are lots of us who are not sleeping, who are with you all the way, because we're, we're frightened and we love this country and we want to see it continue for our children. But unless they... What, what do you think, being, having grown up in the milieu you grew up in, lay it on the line, Bernie Sanders, immediate reaction. <laughs> I, well, the, the milieu where I am now uh, does not support him. And... Uh, I, I think he, he's so outrageous. I mean, I'm not going to do it now, but I do a, not, a, not a bad imitation of him myself. And as I agree with you, he's a pickle salesman, you know, nothing more. But he's scary. And the fact that the kids are going for him, the kids are going for him, it breaks my why, heart. Why do the dumb children, the potheads, go for a guy like that? Because they're stupid. They don't know. They have these guys. They don't know history. They think he's a harmless old man who's honest. He is not a harmless old man. He is a communist revolutionary, and he has been one his entire life. Very interesting. I was reading an article about, you know, some ridiculous Jewish people say, oh, he went to Israel when he was young. He went to Israel. He went to Israel, stayed on the most virulently anti-Israel, super, super, super left-wing kibbutz run by a group, I don't even know if they exist anymore, called Hashomer Hatzair, the Young Guards. This is where he went. And the people who are on this kibbutz, the people who were there, they were absolutely anti anti Israel, anti freedom. They really were die die hard communists. And this is the kibbutz that he went to. I have no idea how long he was there. So he went to the, the he went to the Cuban kibbutz uh, uh, in Israel. Cuban if someone had told you ten years ago that in twenty sixteen the Demon Cat Party would have two self avowed communist socialists running against each other, would you say they were crazy? But they're here. No, it's it's, it's horrifying that they're absolutely up there and that they're not that it's it's that they're not being left out. We have a, a, a criminal in Hil Hillary, and we have someone who could potentially do such damage, such incredible damage, starting with the economy. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. But the kids... What happened to the Democrat Party, which used to be moderate and somewhat supportive of American values? What happened to them? The Democrat Party has been completely co-opted. It has been taken over by the radical, the far, far left. They have no candidates that appeal to the mainstream. How did this happen to the party? Okay, there you have to help me with that. I don't know. My, my history, my, my sense of things going so radically wrong, really um, became much more... Yeah, but, but look at Hillary Clinton. How does she get away with the big lie that she's not part of the establishment? She was first first lady in Arkansas, then first lady of America, then a senator from New York, then secretary of state. And what, we should vote for Hawaii because she's not a man? How is that even possible? Not informed. People are not reading. People, people, as you have said, are much but she's a she's a zero point one percenter. Her and her family are, are are very rich people. How can she pretend she's one of the poor? 
because people are like jingoists. You know, they want to go with the slogans. As you've said, oh, she's a woman. We, we need a woman. Oh, she's had experience. We have experience. These are, these are meaningless tropes that people glom onto, and they hold onto it because they Well, here's the go. bad news for everyone listening to my show. The superdelegates get 30% of all the votes at the convention. Half of them have already pledged to support a candidate. And among those superdelegates, Hillary now has a 99 to 1 advantage over Bernie Sanders. Now, remember, back in 08, Obama won the nomination by less than 300 votes. Did you hear that? And he won the vote among superdelegates by 350 votes. In other words, the superdelegates handed the nomination to Obama over Hillary. And I believe it's going to happen again. They're going to hand it to her this time. There is no democracy in the Democrat primary. It's been pre-selected. This is a facade. This is a facade with the old uh, the old pickle salesman. Laura, it's been a pleasure. And, and I'm sorry, not Laura. Susan, thank you for listening so intently to the show. This is the Savage Nation. If you missed the Donald Trump interview, I will put it up on michaelsavage.com. I'll be back with all the news, views, and reviews right here on the Savage Nation. I, I, during the break, I watched Fox News and Schmendrick sitting around in overcoats in New Hampshire. I, what is this? It looks like a bad parody of a television show. Who's John Sununu? My dog is more of a nationalist than John Sununu. Where'd they get him from? He looks like he's taking hormone shots, for God's sakes. He has the same face as Madeleine Albright. It looks like she took... Forget about it. Where do they get these puffy-faced old Republicans from? John Sununu is supposed to be someone I listen to with regard to who should be voted on. You hear this? And there's that other sad sack, Neil Cavuto. My God. A pack of uh, Yahoo. What do you call that? What's that? M&Ms have more intelligence than... than all the M&Ms, if you shook them up, have more intelligence than Neil Cavuto. If you shook up M&Ms in a box, you'd probably get more of an intelligent response from the M&Ms being shaken than what Neil Cavuto says. I'm sorry, I'm going, I'm going to say what I think about this Fox News. What has it become? I don't understand. Megan McKelly's hairdo is a show unto itself. It looks like she is pulling her hair out at home in front of the mirror because she knows something's happening to her face that she can't control. It's the portrait of Doriana Gray. As she's become the real Megan Kelly, the one that's attacked Trump and attacked basically everything that conservatives believe in, her face has been altering right in front of our eyes. So she's probably ripping at her hair and having to have it trimmed in the morning, and it keeps getting shorter and shorter. It's unlike the Pinocchio thing where the nose got longer and longer. As Pinocchio <laughs> lied, his nose became longer. As Megyn Kelly continues to deceive, her hair gets shorter. Okay, look, I'm doing this for a reason. The reason is, is I don't like the woman. And the reason I don't like the woman is what she's done to Donald Trump. It's that simple. Donald Trump needs to be elected, not Megyn Kelly. And I don't like the idea that the media is controlling who will be the next president. They've done it to us before. And let me tell you something else. The reason America is in the shape it is, is it in, it is in right now is because of the media. In plain English, they did it to us. It's the media that has destroyed the social fabric of the United States of America. It is the media, and that includes the news media and Hollywood all one, owned by the same interlocking corporate directorships. They destroyed everything that's decent in this country. Therefore, I have no faith in Megyn Kelly or any of the other M&Ms in a box. Back in a minute, be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Hour number three, the Savage Nation. 
course, uh, most of America is sort of in a Super Bowl, you know, hangover, and wanting to get the last whiffs of the uh, fumes of the game and all of that. I could care less. Thank God it's over. And uh, tomorrow is the is the big dog day in uh, New Hampshire. It looks like Bernie may may beat the Harrod and the Commie may beat the criminal tomorrow. And uh, I think Trump's going to trounce everyone else. There's no question. Half of them should be off the stage already. I mean, let's get let's get it over with already. How much can you take of this? Is what people are saying. You think I'm the only one who's got? It's like the the, the Zika virus. This primary virus is like a mosquito bit us, and we're all. It's enough already. It's like a disease. End it already. Stop. Stop already. So I had Donald Trump on in the last hour. I, I thought it was interesting. We always get along. I mean, I overtly support him. I'm not going to be like a faker and say, well, yeah, Mr. Trump, blah, blah, blah. What do you think of this? No, I think he's the only one we have who could really beat her, number one. he's t- And at the end of the interview, I said something to him that's important for you to hear. And you can find it on michaelsavage.com. It's a takeaway line. Here it is. Savage tells Trump, don't go soft, stay strong. It's really simple. It's very basic. I know audiences. And when Trump started to go soft under the stupid advice of some campaign advisors, his numbers went down. He's got to say, stay hard because people want a strong man in the White House. They, they've had years of this snake who's been cutting us to ribbons. And they want a strong man in the White House. And I, I believe I'm right. So I'll ask you if, if I'm right or wrong. Do you think that Trump should go soft in order to appeal to a wider audience? I don't. Now, what happened in the debate Saturday night, which I did watch, that I watched, Rubio rubbed out, Carson was cursed, Cruz careened, Bush was bushed, Kasich was sickened, Trump triumphed, and of course Christie was christened. He, he went up in, in my number. In my book, Christie went up. But Kasich looked like he needed a, uh, you know, one of those... I, I don't want to be vulgar about it. Like when someone gets air sick, they reach in the seat f- pocket in front of them. Kasich has a look like he's about to do that. Every time he talks, he looks like he's about to do that. I don't understand it. Like his stomach's out. He has to take a, a pill. And All right, so that's it. Now let's have your callers. KSFO, Betsy, what do you think about my comment to Donald? Stay strong. Don't go soft. Do you agree or disagree? I totally agree. And beyond that, Michael, I'm going to explain to you why if he goes soft, he cannot win. Here's why, and it's not been addressed. There is a fundamental nature of men and women, okay? The fundamental nature of women is to elect, uh, be on the side of uh, men who will protect and provide for them. Would you agree with with that premise. Yeah, of, of course I do. It's encoded in us. Okay. On the other side, the fundamental nature of men is not to take orders from a woman. It's a double whammy. And I put to you... <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you said it that I didn't, but you're 100% right. ...to win the nomination for this reason alone. Now... Uh, uh, Donald Trump would be good. It would be good to make the decision to have a psychologist on his team, and maybe he does, for all I know. Because I don't know, but you notice system. how he shushed up Bush. Did you see when he put his finger in front of his mouth and he went hush two or three times? Did you see? Did you see Bush actually stop talking? He was so stunned. But this is okay. So I didn't see it. I can't comment on it. But Michael, I must answer. All right, all right, I think we finished this up. Thank you very much. No, I, I don't mean to be rude. People say I was rude to the woman. I wasn't. She had her a minute or two. She made her point. Let me explain something about my show. People don't understand this. They say, how come you're so rude to call us? Why don't you let him talk? This is not a phone conversation. Talk radio is not a telephone conversation with the rules of being polite. You've got to make your point, and I have the right to move on so the listeners want to hear the next person, or I want to make a point. It's not that she's bad. She made a good point. Her point was finished when she said... Women fundamentally want a man who is protective of them. And men fundamentally don't want to take orders from women. Boom, move on. That's all. That was the whole point. And I agree with her. Now, is that the way the world is today? No. Women run a lot of things, and they're super competent. They're more competent than most men I know. In, in my experience, I mean, women run things better than men do, by and large. It doesn't mean men are bad. It just means that women have come into their own. 
Does that mean, therefore, I have to support Hillary Clinton, who has such a checkered background and is, a, and, and is so unappealing? No. Give me a woman who's competent and smart and who 